Hello everybody and welcome to BestSEOOnline.com. Today we're going to talk to you about SEO that works and specifically on-page SEO or the things that you can do with your keywords on your website to get the best possible results to rank your website online. So this video is going to be about where to put your keywords. Now there are at least four levels of on-page keyword locations, but in this video we're just going to talk about the top three areas or locations as far as a list of locations for you. Each one of these lists is going to have several components and they're ranked based upon my own experience of which ones offer the best value as far as using your keywords. The first set of locations are really the best places to make sure you place your keyword every single time to get the best results or the optimum results. The first of those is the page URL or your actual website address. So whatever your website name is, here in this example I've got yoursite.com, it's what will go after the forward slash, the actual page title in the URL that you want to contain your keyword. So that's why in the example I've got put your keyword here as the page title. The next is the meta title or the blue text that appears in Google search and we'll look at that in just a moment. After that you have the meta description. That's the black text that appears in the Google search results that explains a little further with more letters and words what your web page is about. If you think about the meta title and the meta description, the meta title could be considered the headline for your article, and the meta description is the first paragraph or the first few lines of text that give people an idea of the content to come. So if they click on that link, what will they find out more about? All of those things are kind of off of your page, right? But they relate directly to your page. They're part of the code that go with your page as it gets uploaded and shared on the internet. But the H1 tag is the title tag for that page itself, and it's the primary title tag. You can have more than one H1 on a document, but what most people do is they'll use an H1 title for the title of their page, and they'll, they'll use H2 or 3 or some other title for different sections of their content. So you want to make sure that the title of your page, the H1 in the content itself, contains your keyword or your keyword phrase. Finally, your keyword should also be at the start of your content. Since it's the subject that you're writing about, Google and other search engines that expect to see your keyword in the first one or two sentences of the content on your website page. The second tier of keyword locations are very helpful for your overall results, but they're not as powerful as that primary list, those first five things. The first of these that we want to talk briefly about are the title tags for the H2, H3, and 4, and so forth. The lower in priority you go, what Google is taking from that when their software is reading your site, is that those are related pieces of content, but they're not the primary driver, not the primary feature of what you're writing about. So unless your other title tags and keywords relate directly to your primary uh, keyword of focus, those are less helpful than ha making sure that you title your H1 tag with your keyword. And it's a good practice not to have the same version of your keyword in your H1 tag and then in your H2, 3, or 4 tags as well. Internal links are links to other pages, typically on your own website and content on your site. So an internal link can provide value for Google and more importantly for your website visitor because it can provide more context. 
Well, you might have a web page that has, say, a thousand words on a topic and covers it pretty well. In any given topic, there are offshoots from that. There's a related content that you can always expand upon and share more thoughts about. An example, if I was a web designer and SEO professional who's working on a website for a local auto mechanic, I might write about a page that talks about state inspections that are required by the state and what's covered. But there's going to be a lot of other related content to that that could answer questions that people might have when they're thinking about their state inspection that I wouldn't want to put all into one piece of content because it would be overwhelming. It might be five, six, seven thousand words. But I can link to that content to provide more information for just those individuals who are interested on it and want to click on it so that it provides value and more context to what we're writing about. So internal links are seen by Google, they're followed by Google and its robot or its algorithm, and they can dramatically impact how well your website ranks, but they're still not the primary drivers, but they're important to use. I would make sure any page that I create has at least one solid internal link going from the page, and if it's a lot of content, that you have related content for on your site, feel free to use three or four links and longer pieces of content. Related phrases. You can't put your keyword in the text multiple times and expect to rank. Google considers that keyword stuffing. And if your keyword ratio is too high, meaning you have too high of a percentage of your total text is your keyword, Google thinks you're just trying to rank for that keyword and that you're not trying to help your customer or visitor by providing valuable content. So it's okay to have related phrases and it may even help your overall search results to talk about things and explain them in a different way as it relates to the person's search query that they've entered in on Google in order to find your web page. The third tier of keyword locations are both old items and new. The two first ones are kind of old. They're dated and don't have as much impact as they used to. Image alt tags are just a different label or title for your image that is saved to your web page. And if you title your images to relate to your keyword or to contain your keyword directly, that can still have a modest positive impact on your web page, so it's worth doing if you have time and if you're in a competitive keyword space. The HTML or the document text or the code for the actual web page it goes on behind the scenes of what you and I see when we visit a website. It's possible to embed text into the code that only really most of the time the robots see. Most people don't go in and look at the code of a web page. Some web designers do, some SEO professionals do, but the average person doesn't spend time looking at the code on a website. They look in front of the house to look and see what's going on and how well things appear, but they don't look behind the scenes. But Google does, and their robots do. So some SEO professionals and some internet authors do still put custom code into the HTML that contain information about the author, information about the web designer, and other things on the particular page for the robots to see. Something newer is called schema, and it's often referred to as schema markup, and it's a language that you can add to your websites to provide more information specifically for the robots or the search algorithms from the search engines to see, read, and understand what your web page is about. It kind of helps them do their heavy lifting. It helps them and makes it easy for them to understand the content on your web page. And something that's going to be impactful going forward is how it impacts your website potentially to show up in the search results when someone uses voice search. So schema may be an impact element that you add to your pages to improve your search results when someone just 
speaks to Alexa or speaks to Siri or speaks to Google Home and ask the questions and then those automated assistants through smartphones or other devices then go online to find the answers. Schema Markup works with those and works with voice search fairly well. So it's something to consider uh, implementing on your web pages and websites now so that your web pages and websites are ready as more and more people begin to use voice search. Right now, the most recent data that I've seen shows that about 20% of the population is using voice search, so it's not a great deal of people that are using that now, but many more uh, will be using it in 2021 and 2022 and going forward because it's just so convenient and those tools are getting more accurate all the time. So that's something that you might want to consider. Let's take a look here at search results. What I'm looking at is I'm in the incognito window. And while I'm logged into my computer, the incognito window will prevent my previous search history from impacting my search results. But since I'm using my computer from its IP location, even in the incognito mode, Google is able to determine my general area and it shows up on a map and then it, that influences the content it, that it shares with me. So if we look, at the search results for a simple term like computer repair, since it's a local term where typically people are looking for local services, we can see the search results here first provide me with what's called the map pack or the three pack. And in a future video, I'm going to talk about ranking your business in the map pack. But this video, we're just focusing on your general uh, web page keyword optimization. But this is just nice to see and be aware of, and we'll cover this in a future video for you, how to rank in the, in the map pack and improve your chances of getting into the three pack, which are the first three results that come up in any given area. But below this is what I wanted to show you, and this is just the first regular results that show up in the search engine, just to show you what a meta title and a meta description show up as. So if we look at the meta title, it's showing up in blue. Here we see the first part of the web page address up here, which is the URL. And then we see below that the meta description, which is the black text that provides more reference information that relates to your keyword search. And if you look at the Google results, what it is provided is my keyword in bold so it sees that my keyword is listed twice in the content and the results for this first particular website. So here you can see the meta title and meta description and think about these as something that should be clickable, should make someone want to click it to go through and visit your page. So you want to optimize those again, either like a subject of an email or like the title of an article and then think about the next two sentences or so, 160 characters approximately, for your meta description, and make sure that that provides more context to what your page is about and gives people information that makes them want to click on it and learn more. And you can see this is a pretty good optimized listings that we're looking at here. Not only does it mention the target keyword twice in the meta description, after having it also in the meta title, but it also has that call to action of learn more here. It has their uh, Google rating and the fact that they have 724 reviews of the business and also has an idea of the price range for their services. So that's a very well done optimized SEO listing. And you can see in the local results that are coming up, it's even coming up before a national brand website like Yelp. So that's something just to um, be aware of how your information is going to appear when you write your title tag and when you write your meta description in the search engine. Hope you found this video helpful and do keep in mind our book on SEO will be out in January of 2021. And if you need help with optimizing your SEO, do keep bestseoonline.com in mind. We'd be happy to help you. Have a great day and I hope you found this valuable.